Hey everyone, say hi to everybody, Christian, and welcome the back them back to Mondays with Mindy. <laughs> hi everybody, welcome back to Mondays with Mindy. <laughs> you said that better than I did. Oh my goodness. Anyway, today's episode features a conversation with a writer producer that has put her touch on some of my favorite television shows and movies. Not every funny and highly intelligent person can translate these assets into their writing, but Jenny Bix is indeed one of them. Jenny was born and raised in Manhattan. She started her career in advertising before breaking into comedy writing, best known for producing and writing for HBO's Sex in the City, which won her a much-deserved Emmy, multiple Golden Globes, and a Producer Guild Award. Wow. She also executive produced and wrote Men in Trees for ABC and The Big C, one of my all-time favorite shows for Showtime. Me too. She was also the showrunner and writer of HBO's Divorce for a season. And not to get it twisted, Jenny writes for films, too. Her work includes the screenplays for the films Never Been Kissed, Drew Barrymore. Of course. What a Girl Wants. The animated Rio 2 and one of my all-time favorite movies of Al Courant, The Greatest Showman. Wow. She also recently complete yeah, with Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Epic. Uh, she also recently completed her play Bounce It for producer Sally Horchow. She's led a few master classes for comedy writing through the Sundance Collab. I love their name. Collab. <laughs> Get it? Me too. Um, yeah. And has an overall development deal with Lionsgate. Most recently, she's partnered up with adorable and darling director Paul Feig to co-produce and write a new Fox comedy series, This Country. It's based on a UK mockumentary. Hmm. So that should be getting going again post-COVID, hopefully. Yeah. Jenny, yeah. Jenny divides her time with her husband, Adam, and their ridiculously adorable pups between their homes in Los Angeles and Maine. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show the very funny Jenny Bix. Oh, hi, you all. Hi, welcome. I'm so happy to be here. We're so happy We're to have so you. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, when Christian and I decided to do this too, it's the one thing during COVID I've missed is talking to fellow creatives and just my tribe. You were the one of the first people to pop into my head. Um, not the. I mean, let's just be honest, because, you know, you've been doing this now for a little bit, and <laughs> I wasn't the first, so let's not, not lie. the first. Let's just, <laughs> let's be honest. Let's be honest from the start. And Christian, let me also say that Jenny has no problem putting me in my place mm. ever. Mm. <laughs> okay, Someone so got I like it. Yeah, thank God <laughs> you're allowed. Um, so the way we start this is Christian and I kind of came up with twenty random questions in my fabulous Johnny Adler secrets jar, and um, we just I grab five and we go from there. Oh, ready? I'm so excited. Mm. I'm so ready. Oh. <laughs> I love, okay, let's just go deep. Jenny Bix, <laughs> when was the last time you cried? <gasps> oh. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've been crying a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, really? Well, you know, it's a hard time. We're not yeah. in the yeah. best of times, right? I cried at a, uh, I, I cried at a dodo rescuing a, a dog. Yes. Mm. Right? Okay. Yes. Okay. You know, yeah. Who doesn't like a rescued dog? We yeah. all need to be yeah. rescued. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite place in the world and why? <laughs> oh, my God. I have a couple. Do okay. I have I, Oh, girl, can I have one? Um, no. As many you as you know, want. I am in one of my most favorite places right now, which is Maine. I'm mm -hmm. in Maine. I would turn my screen around to show everybody, but I, I feel like that would be messy. Um, <laughs> but I am and in also, a tiny. Well, I, would, I would be jealous. <laughs> and you and I don't want to make you jealous. That would be no. Mm, no. Uh, I I love me a little Maine. I love Italy. Mm. I wish I were in Italy right now. If I wasn't in Maine, I'd, I wish I was eating pasta and drinking wine. Mm. Don't we all? Yes. Just sitting yeah. there looking yeah. at. Not gorgeous. that you asked, but I would. I would come. Well, let's just go. <laughs> but get <laughs> you. You have been invited, and Christian, you can come too. I have family there, so we'll be set. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Show off. Yes. Yeah. I go I go pretty okay. regularly, thankfully. Oh. <laughs> You're so lucky. Um, among your friends, what are you best known for? Oh my God. You might maybe answer this better than me. Um, mm -hmm. I think I am known for being a straight shooter. I think I, I tell it like it is. You do. But I you tell it like it is in a very funny and supportive and um yeah, bolstered up way. 
Oh, I, I love that. As, as I one love being that. the recipient you. of your sage advice. Yeah, you. I think I'm even. I think I'm even. People like that I'm, you know, I, I yeah. And then I'm yes. not, you know. Yeah, but you're never a hilaria. I mean, you're, you're I never know. like. I don't think I am. I, no. I know, but I attract the hilaria, which is good and bad. <laughs> Let's just say it. you know. It's a little tiring. A little hilaria goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a hidden talent that you'd like to share? Oh, <laughs> I, I, guess, oh I should, or do you want to just keep it private? <laughs> I, uh, I, I have one hidden talent, but I don't know if I can do it sitting down because it involves basically. I used to do improv. Um, yes. And I did it very poorly. I mean, I enjoyed it, but it turns out I'm not a good actor. So I'm very happy that I found I could do something else. But I was very good at at playing a girl who gets upset and runs out of a room. That's my <laughs> thing. Huh. And if you'd like to see me perform that on screen, I um, am in a little film called Never Been Kissed, which was the yes, that you actually movie. wrote as well. Yes, that I yep. did help write, and I am in it playing a. I, I am. I run out of a room, out of a conference room, having been fired. So that's I can do that. Oh, I will. I will have to. Now, Please. which one is which one is yipping? Which of the two is? It is not. Is it, it, I think it's my little guy, guy Lucius. Oh, it's yours, Christian. Yeah. It's usually, it's my. It usually is one of my two. Okay. I told the mommy had an important podcast. Me too. Thank he's you. just, Thank he's, a, you, he's in his yeah. teenage years. So he's a little vocal and defiant at the moment. It's a little hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Kenny Bix, what scares you? Mm-hmm. Well, right now? <laughs> a lot yeah, right? Of right. I'm very scared by the person who happens to be in the White House right now. Yes. Um, yep. And I'm scared by, here's what I'm scared by. No, it's not very hilarious, but it's true. I'm scared by all the people that have come out from underneath the rocks because of the person in the White House who mm. seems to have, um, I, I think I was naive. I thought that we were Same. a country of like kind, nice people. And turns out yeah. we're a country of, <laughs> that was a bleep. Yeah. Uh, we're a country mm. of people who have become very selfish and um, kind of dumb. Like, I, I think we're kind of like- Well, the, and I think afraid. And yeah. afraid, and so I'm very scared of that right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm scared for. I have older parents that I'm a little scared for. You know, yeah, that's my immediate fears. Um, my other fears: people are talking about me, and I don't know what they're saying. Um, I, I don't love enclosed spaces, so I'm a little claustrophobic. Hmm. Well, hmm. I didn't know that. A little bit. I, I used to be worse. Now, you know. Mm-hmm. You know. Makes sense why That's, Maine is a respite for you because yeah. it's so right. It's so wide beautiful. open. Yeah. Have you yes. made Have you made a plan, you and Adam, to come back to Los Angeles or no? Like, we do have you have not. a date in mind? No, because everything. Yeah. I don't know what happened. We left California and everything went to hell. People, yeah. No, we don't know what's happening. We're not in good shape at this moment. Mm-hmm. We're back at safe people at home. We're are, kind of back in March right, right now. So we're back where we started. Yeah. Yeah. People wear your masks, people, everywhere you are, even if it's not California. Please just put on a mask. Very simple. Yeah. It's very simple. Yeah. So okay. are you are you writing every day? Should no. I lie and say I am? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think you're always really honest. I am. You are, that's you are what one people of like most, about me. Yeah. But but yes, but you are one of the most prolific um, um friends of mine that you you are very disciplined when you need to be in when I need to be. I would say I am did you all find like at the beginning of this you had I had really vivid dreams. Like I had these crazy dreams that were happening and I would wake up and be like, what is my mind doing? And so I think a lot of us, our minds are working so hard, working yeah. overtime that yes. when you actually have to sit down and write, you're tired. It's just mm-hmm. I, it's exhausting. And you have to figure okay. out how to be creative at a time when it feels like the world is on fire. It is. We're in a dumpster. We're in a dumpster fire. So (laughs) the idea of like throwing a birthday party every day on your computer screen is kind of hard, but um, I'm trying to work on stuff that makes me happy and that makes me laugh. Yes. um, Because I think we all need that. So I am not going to be working on it. Did did COVID shut down your gig with 
the new mm -hmm. series with um, Paul Feig yes, for Fox. So, it yes. shut it down. Shut it down. So Paul Feig, and I thank you for that little plug, Paul Feig uh, <laughs> directing and I created a show called, um, well, I, I, I adapted a show called This Country, um, which was a fantastic BBC show. And yes. we did it for Fox and we shot one day of the pilot in North Carolina. <sighs> And then we shut down. That was March 16th. We were the last oh. pilot shooting in America. Yes. And um, yeah, but it looks like we may be headed back soon-ish to, to finish the pilot, which would be awesome. But that would did, be awesome. Yeah, but we did get shut down. So it was very co um, coitus interruptus for yes. us. Yes, yeah. ditto. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. my situation got scrapped. We were, we were into day three of a feature, the new um, Matt Stone, Trey Parker feature. Yeah. Dunzo. Just, just, that's all? Yeah, they decided we were literally in day three. And I just think insurance wise and production wise, it was easier for them because they had no idea when, where, why, who. Right. Well, so crap. That, I'm sorry. That sucks. Well, yeah. yeah it does. I know, yeah, but, but I, it's, it's, I've not been the only one. There are a couple of friends of mine whose projects were just like, oh, eh, never mind. No, you're in good company. <laughs> There's a lot of yeah. that, like, oh, that thing we talked about, not gonna happen. Mm -mm, didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not gonna yeah. happen. Mm -mm. So, so would you guys, would you guys be going back to North Carolina, or th is there a different? Is there a plan B? Our plan A is probably still our plan, which is to go back to North Carolina, finish up Good. the pilot. Um, the the town that we were shooting in North Carolina still very low numbers, which is great. Good. Good. Um, so knock on. Yeah, and you'll make all the production adjustments that are needed at this time. That is correct. But it is a yeah. weird time. It's very hard to get your head around shooting again and keeping everyone safe and yeah. and then be funny on top of it. Thank God yeah. I'm not in it. I just have to be behind the camera. But Well, um, I actually yeah. think like anything, once it starts going, I actually think it's going to um, just take a little time of adjustment and people are going to just dump, jump in the deep end. Really, I, I, I don't want to so. be like terminally optimistic, but I am. Uh, um, listen, someone has to be. So that should be <laughs> that should be you. Here I am. Uh, no, I do, and I and I think a lot of things that are in production now in Australia and Canada may bolster, you know, other places to sort of be like, let's try this. I hope so because there are a lot of people out of work, and it would be yeah. nice to get our industry kind of slowly coming back. You know, anything yes. we can do. Yeah. So, um, in doing my research. I did not know you started in advertising before you went into comedy writing. I We've did never talked about that. I mean, I love that they're, you're still a mystery to me. I'm still, there's still layers <laughs> like an onion, like a tiny <laughs> pearl onion. Just keep peeling the little layers. Exactly. Yeah. So what I didn't get from research and I would just like you to just honestly to ta start jumping into the creative process. How did you make the switch? What happened? Oh my God, it was so interesting. And I tell this story a lot because I feel like people always think like the, the thing you've selected often is the thing you're supposed to do, right? And right. especially for me, I, I was one of those people, I came out of college, I was like, oh, I'm getting a job in advertising. That seems creative, but I understand, like you can carry a briefcase, like it's a job you go to. <laughs> right. Uh, family, it makes your family happy. Mm -hmm. Made my they're, family they're happy. And I, I was like, I understood, uh, I was like, okay, you go somewhere and do a job. Um, and I did it for five years and I worked on some very illustrious products, including yes, Vicks, Vicks VapoRub, oh. um, Sinex, no, Sin Sinex Nose Spray, um, a lot of Procter & Gamble stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I ended my tenure with Maxwell House Coffee, which is yeah. you know, very exciting. Yeah. Um, and we are the agency I worked with, which was a very large agency, um, lost a very large client. And they said, um, listen, we you can stay and work on. There was another account that we all knew was an awful account to work on. And I hmm. won't say it, but um, it rhymes with Gars and it's a coffee brand. Mm. Uh, no, it's a um, it's a candy brand. Sorry. Mm. Um, oh, that's so, really no longer with us, kind of. Kind of not, but it was run yeah. by the family, that family, and they were uh, not um, apparently easy to work with. And or we could pay you for six months and, you know, you can leave. And I was like, you know what? I am going to leave. And it was this big moment. You know, when you make those leaps of faith where you say, I know that I want to be writing full time. I And you did know that then. I did. I did know that. Okay. Then. Okay. Um, 
I want to try more improv. There were all these things I wanted to do. And so I took the money and you know what I did? I went to Italy. I went to Italy oh, for two that's months. My girl. And yes. I, it was, you know, it was magical. It was magical. And I went. And you had your Italian. own Jenny Eat, Pray, Love moment. I, was I just had kind say. of an Eat, Pray, Love. But you know what? Oddly, sadly, you're in a, no love. Like I, there was no love, but there was a lot Damn of it. eating and, and praying <laughs> that I would be able to get a job writing when I came back. <laughs> Which, there thankfully, it, it did happen. Uh, so I came back and got a job uh, working, writing radio comedy. So, which was this weird little world of mainly DJs and voiceover artists who, and we would do that morning drive radio that you used to hear where they do yeah. yes. impressions of presidents oh, or like song. I was really good at song parodies. That's a hidden talent of mine. I'm very good at song parodies. Hmm. Uh, writing That's song huge. parodies. I know I huge. love that. I know. So if anyone needs a song parody, <laughs> I am your gal. Um, making, so making I, notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I came, I came back and started doing that, which paid just enough to pay my rent. And then slowly, I worked my way um, to a job in Hollywood. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that was a big change. It was a, the big moment. You sometimes don't realize where your big moment is until after it Afterwards, happens. Yeah. Were um, you in New York was, City for this period? I was in New York. Yeah, okay. I was in New York. And um, yeah, and I took the big leap. And then I didn't look back. And it was you know, and by the way, advertising, super fun industry to be in. It's really, yes. it's changed a lot since I was in it, but really fun. We were, it wasn't, we wasn't Mad Men anymore. So we didn't have three martini lunches, but it was super fun. And, yeah. you know, but I'm glad I'm doing what I do. One of my I'm bestie, you know, yeah. Josh who, with the, with the farm, Beekman, Josh mm -hmm. Purcell, his success was in advertising. He That's had a right. blast for almost 15 years. He mm -hmm. loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's great people. It's, it is the closest you'll come to being super creative without being in the world where you're sitting by yourself in a room trying to figure out how to be creative. So I think it's a great way to kind of get your feet wet. Do yeah. you work better um, by yourself or when you're in a writer's room generally? Generally, I am a, I <laughs> like that face. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's a good mini face. Sorry. What do you think? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I, I, uh, I like being with people and that's partly why I'm kind of, you know, what makes me cry a little now too. It's like, it's yeah. sad being a lot, you know, I, I'm a good, yes. I'm a good little worker bee. And I like I, when you're in a writer's room, it's like a dysfunctional family and you get to know each other really well and you have inside jokes and you worry about what you're going to eat for lunch. And then you fight <laughs> about what you ordered. And then you ask if you can have a bite of someone else's food. It's a lot of food <laughs> in the writer's room. Maybe that's why I like it. I miss having someone else get me food. Um, but I do, I, I, I really love a writer's room. It's a great way to collaborate and a great way. If you're feeling like you don't, you're, you're stuck, you can turn to somebody else. And that's a yeah. great, it's great. So you're, I miss are, you're a better writer with people. Cause I wouldn't necessarily say that cause you do some kick-ass writing on your own. Oh, well, thank you. I do both, but, um, I think it depends on the project, right? I mean, if I feel right. like there's something that I really know, I've got my hands around and, and I know how to do it. I'm, great on my own. Um, but when you're doing, when you're doing television, you're doing episode after episode, and it's super yeah. fast, you, you need to have a group you can rely on and yeah. um, that you can bounce things off of. Um, well, and I usually, like and I would say in the last decade, at least you've been the helms person of those rooms. And so is that different than just being in the room? Yeah. I, I like that you said, by the way, kudos to you for saying helms person, mm -hmm. not like helmsman. Mm -hmm. I am right? a little evolved, just I, a little. Uh, you are highly evolved. <laughs> Thank highly. you, Beth. Have you Thank done 23 you. and Me? Have yes. you done that thing? How much Neanderthal do you have? I bet you don't have very much Neanderthal. You know what? Very little. It's been bred out, right. apparently. Right. Same. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that, Dom. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell me about um, being the Helms person right. in the writer's room versus just being well, in there. It's, you know, being a showrunner slash helms person um, is, it's not a fun job. Like everyone thinks they want to do that job. And then um, when you get there, it's it's a lot of management stressful and it's, too. it's stressful and it's a little less fun because you can't, those are my dogs barking now. <laughs> it's okay. They just want to say hi. That's yeah, okay. Well, no, I kind of like that. Okay. It means, you know, it's, it's comforting. Homey. Okay, good. No. Um, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. Um, no. Uh, it, here's the thing. When you are running the show, 
you can't make fun of like you you can't you're not part of the group <laughs> you're the mother like right. you're the one or the father you, have to, or, you right. have to love them all and you can't like just relax and start <laughs> laughing because you're always aware you're like oh shit, i got five episodes i gotta turn around and you guys are all just having fun and why can't i have fun um so it's a it's a tougher job that way you're no longer considered an equal and it's a little more fun being in a room when you're just one of the gang versus being the one who has to you know crack the whip sometimes and be like mean mommy is what we call yeah. it um but yes i try not to be too mean and i try to be um Oh, and it's also, I would assume, more more encompassing of so, in, of your time, that you can't just, not that right. people in writer's room have time cards, but you really don't go home and just clock out. Right, exactly. And I think, you know, good writers of any level in a writer's room probably aren't clocking out completely, but you can go home and be like, oh, thank God I'm not in charge. And, yeah. and I've been um, lucky that most of the shows I've been in charge of haven't had huge problems. So it's, you know, it's, fun still but yeah it's, not, it's a lot it's a lot of work it is definitely yeah, dealing with studio and production and other people that normally you wouldn't have to deal with oh and actors i don't know if you know how crazy actors are i mean <laughs> have <laughs> you heard that actors? some people say crazy. that there's i've heard a rumor mm. or two yeah, yeah whatever but you know what here's what i say i don't subscribe to that because also there are crazy writers also there are crazy executives yeah yes yeah. everyone's a little crazy yeah right yeah. we're all in this because so we're just a little crazy Thank yeah. goodness. Is, I like that. Huge. I like that kind of crazy. It com it's comfortable to be around for me. Probably I for me too. For me too. Otherwise, why would we do it? Yeah. Right. So what is, what is your creative process as you define it? Like, I know that's a really heady, you know, question, but if someone were to say well, to you, like if you had to do one of your Sundance collabs, I'm sorry, but I just love that they call it that. <laughs> collabs. Um, collab. And, and, and one of the, participants asked you, you know, what's your creative process? What would your answer be? I won't hold you to it. Oh my God. I wish I had one. You know, when I have done the Sundance collabs, um, <laughs> Tom Fontana does it as well. Oh, and wow. He has such an amazing process. And every time I'm there and talking to him, I try to do what he does, which lasts for the exact three days that I'm with him, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> You know, it, he wakes up at five in the morning and just starts writing. And I think that part of the creative process is the act of sitting down, right? Mm -hmm. And just make doing something. Right. Um, for me, sometimes I'll be in that space where I'm doing that a lot and I'm excited and I want to sit down and write every day. So uh, this is a long way of saying I don't really have a process except, mm -hmm. um, and then some. sometimes it's about just going for walks and thinking through what's exciting me. The one thing I've learned over time is to, and maybe I've said this to you, but is, is to go towards the love. And what I mean by that is work with people that want to work with you, but also mm -hmm. um, work on projects that you're excited by, not the ones you're supposed to do. And I think over time, it's, it's hard to say no to things, but sometimes you have to say, you know, as much as I should want to do this, I don't. What I really want to do is write this crazy thing. And that will always be a better thing. Better mm -hmm. the, the writing will be better because you're more excited. I've known when you've done that a couple of times. I have done that. And, for, um, for your mental health and I actually think for the betterment of your career, because there's always so then been a, like the next thing you do is kind of amazing after well, that. God bless. God bless you. But yeah, I would say my process is is about, um, I, I don't love things like outlining. You know, there are people who love that version of process and I can't stand that part. It makes me feel mm -hmm. like you have this like great little baby. You're starting to like, okay, I'm going to go with this analogy. Like you have this little <laughs> baby and you're starting to like bottle feed it or breastfeed it. You're like, oh, I'm going to burp my little baby. And then the outline is like, you just put a big blanket on it and hope it doesn't like smother itself. <laughs> <laughs> we just love a good dead baby analogy but yeah I, thanks yeah. for that Jen yeah so yeah. I will avoid doing that for a while because I'd like to just think about where my characters want to go instead of like yeah. where they should go um hmm. I've also well, that helps that, me yeah. as an actor because my my creative process really is just to be prepared and whatever that means and it's different depending on what I'm doing so it right. sounds like preparedness yeah be prepared but also know that there isn't one way to do this job, you know, right. and even from yeah. from project to project, I will operate differently depending on what what the project is. Um, yeah. But what you do have to do is when the chips are done, you do have to sit down and actually stare at your computer screen and 
I was reading, did you read this piece in the New York Times last week about, oh, I'm going to forget the name of the process, but you're supposed to basically set an egg timer for 25 minutes. Yeah, oh, Pomodoro, and, yes. the Pomodoro process. Yes, the Pomodoro. Yes. Thank you. Well, of course, the Italian knows. The Italian, the of course. Because <laughs> Italian. It is perfect. a thing. Yeah, I use it. <laughs> it is a literally. thing. It is a thing. And then you get up for five minutes. You're not mm -hmm. allowed to, right? Okay. Yep, and and I right. did find myself, I tried that out a little bit and I was like, this is interesting. Um, you know, it, I don't love that you have to stop while you're kind of on a roll, but I appreciate yeah. right. that if you're on a roll, you're going to come back and still know why you're excited about yeah. that thing. Um, and I think sometimes that's what it takes is literally making yourself sit down. Even if you don't want to, you sit down and just, mm, yeah. that's me on the keyboard. Mm. <laughs> like that cat meme. Genius, genius yeah. in action. There it is. Wow. Mm. Do, you, do you ever, or have you ever subscribed to the famous, uh, I forget, is it Hemingway that said it? Is it right, drunk, edit, sober? Do you ever subscribe to that sort of philosophy sometimes? I have never heard that theory. Oh, okay, really? So I think it's well, Hemingway never... that said that. Right, drunk, uh -oh. edit, okay. sober. You have right. given... And it's over giving yeah. birth to an idea here. You know what? <laughs> I have been drunk for the last four months. So Sick. unknowingly, I have been writing drunk. So now it's all oh making God. odd, <laughs> odd <laughs> sense to me. You know what? That actually does make a lot of sense is you do have to kind of just go in, free have up. fun, yeah. Yeah, free, free yourself, yourself up. up. I, that was something I had to learn because I was kind of editing as I went. And I found that that, mm. that kind of slow, it's a different part of your brain you're using when you edit yeah. versus just have fun. Um, and that it's funny because just yesterday I was talking to a gal who's a high school senior who wanted to know about how to get into writing. And I'm like, first of all, you're like so far ahead of the game because you know. Oh my gosh, that she knows. Yeah. yeah. She already knows. In high school. Um, God, God bless you. Um, but I often, I said to her and I often say to people um, that, I'm going to maybe bastardize this quote, but it's from Tennessee Williams, which is um, great plays aren't written, they're rewritten. Mm. And what that means is don't go in thinking that this thing you're, you're creating is going to be perfect the first time out, just right. get something out. And then you yeah. can go back in sober, if you will, <laughs> and make it great. Um, right. Yeah. And by the way, some great things come from that magic of just being letting yourself be free. I think we don't, I think it's gonna be hard for us all to feel free for a long time. Uh, you know? I agree. I think that's gonna be the hardest bit yeah. of this whole thing for all creatives of all yeah. kinds is just to really just feel safe and open and yeah. let it fly, you know, yeah. kind of feeling because we're, so we're so restricted. We're so restricted. What are you um, usually inspired by and what are you inspired by now? Oh, God, these are really good questions. Um, hey, listen, I'm a smart cookie chick. Oh, uh, you are beyond. You're too smart for your own good. <laughs> Let it be known. Um, Thank what you. Am I, Please publicize. I, <laughs> I, I am inspired by great art. I mean, I'm inspired by other people creating. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll find, by the way, when you talk about process, sometimes what I'll do is I'll pick up a screenplay of a, of a film that I've loved and I'll just start reading it because it will help me mm -hmm. to be reminded of what magic can be. Um, so I'm very inspired by other artists, right? Yes, and even ditto. right now, as much as people can and can't, can't create. Um, now I'm inspired by people who are courageous right now. Like I feel like the least we can do is create art when these people are like these moms in Portland who are standing in front of I mean, tear gassing yeah. agents. You know? um, Absolutely. It's, it's is over said, but it's unbelievable. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. I, yeah. I find yeah. it unbelievable if they, if they, what's happening. Yeah. If they can, if people, ordinary people can go out there and have their lives affected in ways that I can't even imagine, then the least I can do is be courageous in front of my keyboard. Like at least I can try to. Right. So I'm very inspired by that and by the hope of it. So I, I tend to, I'm an optimistic writer. Like I like to write now about relationships and community. I always have, yeah. but I like to, I, community is really important to me right now because we all need it so badly. And some of us um, aren't realizing that, but so I'm very inspired by that. You know, I think all, everything I'm writing right now is about community. I love that. Yeah. Have you, yeah. have, has something happened during these four months that has changed you in some profound way? Are you, you have clocked that like, I think I feel a little different about either a person, a relationship, a place. That's another. Is that? Uh, 
I I have never made so much bread in my life. I will say, <laughs> so I can safely say I feel differently about my ability to make bread. For Bravo! Yeah, kudos. Um, <laughs> thank you. If I, if I can do nothing else, it's that. Um, I've realized I own too many possessions. Like mm. I, I wonder how many people have gone through their closet and just said, because when oh, yeah. push comes to shove, how much you know? How, yeah. how much do we really need? And yeah. That, that kind of consumption and ownership and you know having been on sex in the city i, I have all of these shoes right like yes we were, i can only imagine and i think like how am i ever going to wear all these shoes again i mean let alone the fact that you know no one's wearing shoes in the i was thinking the other day i was like oh god these people who work in shoe retail like our friend mm -hmm. craig like people mm -hmm. who, no one's buying shoes no one's buying no. a handbag you don't need a no. purse where are you going with your damn purse to the kitchen what are you <laughs> right. doing Right. So I, I have learned that about myself. I've learned that, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, um, you learn who matters to you and then who, if you haven't spoken to them for a while, you're desperate to speak to and, and who you don't really need to. Like there's a lot of people in our lives that aren't, uh, when the chips are down, you they're not maybe as important as you thought they were. To That's been my biggest thing. It's kind yeah. of been amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's great because it also shows you who is important. You know, it it's mm -hmm. a <clears throat> leveling, right? It just shifts yeah. everything around. Um, it, I really appreciate the dodo dog videos now. I've learned that. Mm. I appreciate yes. my husband. We haven't killed each other. And that impressive. In itself, impressive. Um, we definitely. Because I don't think there will be COVID babies. I will think there will be a plethora of COVID divorces. Well, there are. My yeah. friend yeah. is a divorce attorney. I know too. Yeah. She oh, is, is she busy? busy? She's quite busy. So I think that, I mean, that was going to happen. People who never spend any time together and suddenly you're locked down. Right. Yeah. That's a little, it's a little dicey. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you and Adam have, is there a new normal with you guys? There's a, I mean, we, you know, we, we spent a lot of time together anyway. Yeah. So for that's us, true. It, yeah. it would be easier for us to adjust, but definitely we've found like some of us have one, some of us, us, the only two of us. <laughs> <laughs> But we and you've also way. developed multiple yeah. personality disorder. Oh, okay, yeah. we have discovered we're both extremely screwed up. <laughs> um, but we do each have jobs. Like I'm very, very, very good at loading the dishwasher, and that is my job. And don't don't f with that. Like don't come in and right. try to figure out how to do the dishwasher. I love doing laundry, so let me do the laundry. Same. You know. Yes. So as long as we have our jobs, we're okay. If you cross mm -hmm. over those jobs. There's a, you know, can be a problem, but, uh, you yeah. know, we've, we've found a, you spend a lot of time eating meals with the same person, you know, but I'm very lucky I have somebody to eat meals with. I mean, I, yeah. I think yes. it's been awfully, awfully hard for my, my friends of all ages who happen to be single or alone, alone. right now. And that yeah. is it's not, a, not a good place to be. No, we're um, not meant to be, no. not meant to me spend this much amount of time alone for sure. Agreed. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Um, you know what I loved being in LA was hearing all the birds, like w when the traffic yes. stopped um, oh, and yes. you could take a for walk. I know. And I was like, wait, do, how many of my neighbors have chickens? Like suddenly I was hearing all these chickens. I was like, <laughs> yes. are you allowed to have chickens? What the hell? Should I have chickens? Like I, I went so into annoying. kind of a spiral yeah. about chickens, but it was very LA. But the the birds and all the ant, like, you yes. know. It's, it's lovely still to see how nature kind of comes back into our world when we let it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's been very eye opening for me. What too. What are your favorite hobbies, by the way, when you're not writing and just being having uh, your life? I, I, I know, it. obviously, yeah. tennis. Have you been playing tennis? I, I've been playing tennis. I enjoy fretting. I like to fret. <laughs> I like to worry. Apparently, I do. Um, I love oh my gosh. general anxiety. I don't know if that falls under the same thing. It probably does. Um, no, I, so I productive, it's incredibly productive. Gets so much done. Um, I like to worry about other people. I, like to, yeah. uh, I have been playing some tennis. I have been oh, walking. I've been doing a lot of walking, which I really enjoy walking the dogs, walking myself. Um, what else have I been, what else have I been doing? I've been reading. I'm trying to read more. Mm -hmm. Right. But again, it's mm -hmm. hard to even concentrate on reading. Like I'll find myself same. Like, just Right. So we yeah. all have to con learn how to concentrate more because there's great books out there right now. And I want to I want to read them all. Yeah. Um, I do have to say TCM has become my new best friend. 
I have been watching uh, Turner classic movies. Right. Let me just say very Love inspiring. It. And it's, it's been my binge. What have you yeah. been binging on? Oh my God. Okay. What so do you, what do you guys love right now? Right now we are finally watching the Americans, which we had not watched. Oh um, yes. Yeah. And I will say that was very prescient. Like there's a lot of stuff in there that right now I'm like, Oh, did they know this was all going to happen? Isn't that insane? Like, how did they know about all the Russian stuff? And the, and yeah. the, unfortunately it's history know? repeating. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I love that Carrie Russell and she's just, you know, there, it, I, I think that's a very good show. We made it all the way through Schitt's Creek, which is terrific and yeah. so mm-hmm. enjoyable and exactly what we need right now. Like a little mm-hmm. like cotton candy of a show. Yes. Um, so, and, and, and then I watch like these really dark documentaries, which um, I Same. probably shouldn't right now. Like a lot of like true murder documentaries, which you know, maybe right now, no, maybe our life <laughs> yeah, is already. I know right? a little, a little light and fluffy. I find yeah, necessary too, though. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I do. I did love my shit's great. That was I. Uh, you know, kudos to all of them because that was yeah. so brilliant. It's such a simple, Same. lovely. The characters are so friggin' funny, mm-hmm. and um, and you just can tell they're having a great time and. Yeah. Who doesn't want to live in that world? So I I'm being a little bit of a tangential Trudy right now, uh, just because um, I just want to talk a little bit about your trajectory only because the people that I know that have been satellites around my life, or I've been a satellite around their life are not as kind as you are and are not as um, friendly and lovable and a good friend when they've oh, reached your true. level of success. There's something that kind of happens. I don't know what it is, whether it's just people are, you know, at that point you're being asked favors from everyone or you're being used or whatever, but you have maintained this ability to just have your friends and have a fun life and still be a really serious player. Um, oh, that's, that's like such a lovely thing to hear. But did it's my true. Mother, did my mother pay you to say that? <laughs> No. Not today, no. Not today. Um, so she owes you some money. Okay. Yeah, she owes me back. Yeah. But no, but it, it is true. We've actually talked about this privately, you and I, before, yeah. where it's just, it's it's not only commendable, but it comes natural to you. You don't have to work hard to be a nice person. I, you know what? I had really good role models. I mean, it, first of all, I don't, I'm probably not always a nice person. Um, I, tr- I try to be, I try to pe- treat people with kindness. I do. Um, but my, my mom really taught us well, like there was definitely kind of, you did, you were, you need to be a good person, right? right. That's more important in the end. Um, so all credit goes to my parents, not necessarily to, to me about how you mm-hmm. become a better person. Um, but I know not right this second in this time that we're living, but can you, do you sometimes sit back and look at your trajectory and do the little, like jump back, kiss myself a little bit? (laughs) Um, I, sometimes I will look back and say, wow. I mean, you know what? I'm just very, very thankful right now. Like what I, I'm very, I feel very fortunate for a variety of a ton of reasons that don't have to do with what, what we all do for a living. But um, yeah, I feel really, really fortunate, and I'm really proud of the work I've I've done. I'm I get m- prouder in weird moments, like when, um, you know, I wrote a little movie called The Greatest Showman, which I'm sure yes, <laughs> and um, I have so many kid fans, like these kids who write these fan letters to me, and it's really oh. I I love that these kids ha- are loving this movie because it's the right message for them, you know, to be yourself yes. and try hard and don't let anyone tell you you're, there's anything wrong with being different. You know, all right. those messages. And find your I, community. So yeah. Find your, find your people and they're, they will, you will find them and they will find you. So I think that's um, the stuff I'm proudest of is writing the stuff to people. And, you know, look, still with Sex and the City, I'll have girls come up to me and say, oh my God, that, that happened to me. And, you know, when we were writing that, we thought we were just the freaks that that was happening to. But, uh, you know, everyone's been through different stages in their life. And if, if if I can put stuff out there that makes people feel better, that is actually the thing that makes me really happy. Um, well, and I don't know if feel better necessarily is applicable. But you know that my favorite thing that you've done so far, because you got another at least 40 or 50 in you. Uh, just to let you know, I have huge well, expectations. Say, yeah, huge understood. expectations. <laughs> but the big C really... Um, oh you know, was, it, it's one of my most favorite things you've done. Yeah. I, I love that. that. And that was, that was very, it was so different in every aspect. Mm-hmm. Of yeah, I love this. 
And look, that is a case where you we had actors who were so <laughs> great. I mean, yeah. Laura is a goddess and she to work with her um was a gift. And so yeah. yes, it the writing we were doing was was <laughs> really good. We were really Stories. proud of it. Yeah. But we couldn't have done it if we didn't have, you know, John Hickey and Laura uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, Gabby Sidibe. And we had mm -hmm. such it was such fun. And it's a, look, it's a dark topic, but we had a really good time doing it. And yeah, I'm really proud of that, too, because it was about a subject that people didn't necessarily It's very want to talk dark about. and hard, and yeah. yet there was humor in it. And there was yeah. familiarity to it that people who are either going through it or had a relative going through it, which truly means everybody, unfortunately. Yeah, I exactly. just, anyway. Oh, good, you know, I'm glad. Like, that's, I, I, I that, it, it always makes me happy when people, when, you know, people are touched by something. Yes. That's the greatest yes. gift we have as, as, you know, performers or act, you know, actors or writers or whomever Creators, is yeah. to, to touch people, to yeah. make them feel something. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. I adore you. Is Thank the, you. Is this, this is the end, isn't it? This is just a goodbye. It's just like, the beginning for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you're just gonna move you, on. As always, to have made person. me laugh. Uh, have made me laugh and surprised me with some of your answers. I I love that about you that you okay. always surprise me. Well, you are so steadfast. Um, and I I adore you, and I'm so grateful that um we have come into each other's lives. And I'm, I'm so I'm, excited I'm, about this conversation getting out there. No, I need to say this. I need to yeah. say kudos to your bangs. Your bangs <sighs> are are their own, like they need their own trailer. Like those are some like star worthy bangs. Okay. So this is one of those things where I was so self-conscious of, you know, that I've been cut many times uh, due to the big C and I have this whopper uh, of a scar. And you know what? Finally, my hairdresser is like, let me just give you bangs. Okay. Cause I just <laughs> kept telling her, like, I mean, I I'm almost ready to get that spray can. I'm so self-conscious. <laughs> no one else could see it. But me, okay. But bangs, it's a game changer. That's and that's you know my what? gift to everybody. And I don't know if all the fans will be able to see what I'm seeing right now, but these bangs are so working for you. So thank you. Let's say, let's say kudos to bangs, especially during a pandemic. Yeah. Listen, to bring the whatever, bangs. whatever it takes to just put a pep in your step, I'll take it. Yeah. So for me, it's bangs. Heard. <laughs> and you know what? We all need to find a little bang in our life. Am I right? Pun intended. Uh, yes. Listen. Uh, I'm ready for a big bang any moment. So <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking about language. Yes, um, I, uh. I adore you. I am. So, you know. We'll have a whole other podcast where we talk about our how we met um, and all the. Uh, yes, yes. yes, we will. Yes. Um, and also um, how at some point we will work together because it's my dream. It's, oh, it's gonna. It. I'd like God to be my boss. It, it's gonna happen. I. Yeah. I don't want to be your boss. I don't want to walk in front of you. I want to walk beside you. <laughs> Oh, I like that. We shall. Yeah, like that too. Although knowing me, I nice. will be two steps behind you. <laughs> You're fast. You're That's quick. only because you stepped on a shoelace. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jenny, thank you so much. I'm very excited for your new project. And hurry, 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 because we need more from you always. Yeah. You're thank a you. goddess. Thank you all. And you. wear your masks. Yeah, and stay safe. Hands. And um, kiss the dogs and Adam for me in that order. <laughs> That's usually the order it goes in. Bye. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Thank you very Thanks, much. Jenny.